Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with a Walther PPK S, which has been reintroduced by Walther of Germany, or Walther, as you some people will pronounce it correctly. I'm going to go ahead and call it Walther, and they have a manufacturing facility in Arkansas, and they again have reintroduced the PPK. And we have one here this afternoon to show to you guys. But before we get to the new PPK, let's talk about the original PPK. This is a World War II era Walther PPK in 32 ACP or 765 Browning. This one does bear the marks of Nazi Germany, and the gun was developed in the 1920s. And it's probably one of the most cloned handguns out there in terms of how it works. I've shown you many handguns here on the channel that really are clones or knockoffs of this original design. So again, this one's chambered in 32 ACP. It has a seven round magazine. You can see it has a little teeny tiny loaded chamber indicator. There's a little pin sticking out right here just above the hammer and then the hammer's notched so you can, from the double action position, see this little pin protruding. That's your loaded chamber indicator and that's important to note. Now this handgun does have dovetailed rear sight and then a machined front sight into the gun. It has a manual safety here, which will put the safety on. The gun cannot fire from this position. It's a double action, single action handgun and the magazine releases right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the weapon on fire. I'm gonna fire my seven rounds of 32 ACP. Then we're gonna take a look at the new PPK S from Walter USA, which again was manufactured in Arkansas, right here in the good old Midwest. All right, here we go. First seven rounds of the afternoon. And the gun locks open. You release the magazine. The slide stays to the rear. When you put a fresh magazine into the original, you just pull the slide to the rear and let it go. Decock it, put it back on fire, and it's ready to go. All right, now you've seen the original. Let's take a look at the new one. This is the new Walther PPK S, and this one again is made in Fort Smith, Arkansas. This handgun has an interesting history. It's been manufactured in the United States before. Uh, it was brought to market by Inner Arms, who has had it manufactured here in the United States under license for some time. Then Smith and Wesson, believe it or not, <clears throat> manufactured the handgun under license for some time, and it actually earned a reputation for being poorly made and unreliable when Smith and Wesson was making the handgun. Now, uh, Walther has resumed production of the handgun here in the United States. And there's an important reason why they're manufacturing the gun here in the United States, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video. So this one's chambered in 380 or nine millimeter Kurs. And some people will say Kurtz and put a T in there. I've been guilty of that myself in the past, but it's, uh, it's pronounced Kurtz and it's K-U-R-Z. But we're just gonna call it 380 ACP because that's what's marked right here on the uh, ejection port, and that's what we call it here in the United States. This handgun holds seven rounds, just like the original 32 ACP version. I'm gonna reach in my pocket here and grab one of the two magazines. So here you can see that it's holding seven rounds, and this is just some Winchester ball ammo. And what's really interesting, you'll notice it has a flat point on it. And a lot of the 380 ball, for whatever reason, has a flat point, which I've seen cause malfunctions in other 380 handguns. So we brought some of this out and some hollow points to see how the handgun works because previous iterations of this gun uh, did have problems with hollow points. Well, this is almost like a hollow point, but we will try some hollow points as well. So we're going to go ahead and load the seven rounds into the pistol. You can put the weapon on safe before you load it by pu pushing that lever down. And now I'm going to grab it by the slide serrations, pull the slide to the rear and release it. And you'll notice that the hammer went forward, the trigger is rearward, and the safety is on. The gun cannot fire from this position. When you flip the lever up, the trigger pops forward. Red means danger or fire. And now the gun is ready to fire. On top, we have some very rudimentary sights, both of which are machined into the slide. The original PP and PPK had dovetailed rear sights that you could adjust for windage. These are not adjustable. There's also a dab of red paint in the rear sight and the front sight. The top of the slide is machined to reduce glare. And it also has a loaded chamber indicator 
right there, a little pin sticking out. Now, it doesn't stick out quite as far as the original 32 ACP gun from World War II, but it protrudes. And we have that slot cut in the top of the hammer. So from the firing position like this, we can easily see that little loaded chamber indicator. Okay, so let's see what the double action pull is like on this first shot. All right, so the double action trigger pull is actually very short and very fast compared to the original gun. Some people have complained in the past about these handguns having really nasty double action trigger pulls. This handgun has an improved double action trigger pull. I actually like it quite a bit. It was not stagey at all, and it just was, felt like a super short travel before it fired. I like it quite a bit. Let's see what that single action feels like. All right, so the single action is nice and light. I don't feel or hear a reset. Matter of fact, I don't know when the trigger resets. I just barely let it forward, and then I go, okay, pull, bang, it goes off. So I don't get a tactile response through the trigger, but it has a nice, light, crisp let off, and the trigger does release when it's almost completely back against the frame. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Let's load up another magazine. Now, this one had the pinky extension on it, and that actually gives me a really nice grip with my big hands. My pinky's fully supported. All right, so the other magazine that ships with the pistol, and we have some more of that Winchester ammunition with that blunt nose on it, is a non-pinky extension on the floor plate. So now my pinky is going to dangle a little bit in space. All right, you can see that my pinky is not supported by the gun now. To load the weapon, there is no slide release. I have to pull the slide rearward and let it go. Now the gun is in the fire position with the hammer back. I can again drop it safely on a live round by putting the safety on, push the safety forward, and now it's ready to fire again. Let's get another feel for that double action trigger pull. Yeah, that's actually a really, really good trigger pull. What's weird is there's nothing to tell me when that single action trigger resets. Boy, it shoots really, really nice. It's heavier than the original Walther PPK because it's made out of stainless steel. It's a little bit bulkier, it's a little bit heavier. And again, we'll get into that here uh, very shortly in the video as to why that is. But uh, boy, the gun sure tames that 380 really, really nicely. Now, another thing you're gonna notice on this handgun that's slightly different than the original is this beaver tail comes out quite a bit further than it does on the original handgun. That's so it protects you from hammer bite when the gun recoils. With the original shorter beaver tail of the original design, a lot of people complained about getting the meat of their hand pinched by the hammer. That's been done away with with this extended beaver tail. So overall, this is a very pleasant little handgun to shoot, even without that pinky rest on it. I like it quite a bit. So let's do some more shooting with the handgun. Let's put some hollow points in it and see how it ha handles those and just see what the reliability is on this new Walther PPKS. When I posted pictures of the PPKS on Instagram, uh, many commenters asked about the reliability of the handgun with hollow points. We have two different flavors of hollow points out here this afternoon. Now, I personally, I actually did a video on this, don't believe in using hollow points with the 380. I believe it makes the bullet stop penetrating early. I prefer using ball rounds if I'm going to carry a 32 ACP or a 380 ACP. And if you want to know why, there's a whole video uh, that talks about that here on the Military Arms Channel. But what I have here in my hands is seven rounds of Winchester PDX-1 95 grain 380 hollow points. In the other magazine, I have seven rounds of 90 grain gold dots from Spear. All right, so let's go ahead and load the Winchesters up, put the magazine in, pull the slide to the rear, chamber that first round drop the safety so the hammer drops. We can see that the loaded chamber indicator is working as it should be. And now let's fire at Mr. Rubber Dummy that's a little over seven yards away. Definitely a little bit more pep in those loads. Very controllable though. It doesn't hurt the hand. That beaver tail's working wonderfully, but I'm not really the guy that has most of those types of problems. Jason really complains because he has meatier man hands than I have. Uh, my little skinny hands don't really have much of a problem with slide bite, but uh, he likes the way this new PPKS handles as well. Now we have seven rounds of the gold dots in there. Let's see how these fire. Go ahead and drop that hammer, put it back in the fire position. I really do like the double action on this handgun quite a bit.
All right, seems like all the rounds are going to point of aim, which is right center of mass of the rubber dummy, and the gun's locking open and cycling just fine. We'll continue to fire off a few more magazines full of these various hollow points, but I'm going to go ahead and say that the handgun does not have any problems with commonly used hollow points that would be uh, out there and available. So again, we've only tested it with the Winchester and the Gold Dots, the PDX-1s and the Gold Dots, so it's by no means an extensive test, but I'm fairly confident the handgun's going to go ahead and work just fine with most hollow points that are out there. Under the Gun Control Act of 1968, there were certain restrictions placed on all sorts of firearms for them to be of sporting purpose and therefore allowed into the United States. For handguns, they have a point system. And the handgun must be of a certain size and weight before it has enough points to actually be importable under the Gun Control Act of 1968. Well, the original Walther PPK was too small and light to be importable as a sporting handgun, as ridiculous as that may sound. So then modifications were made to the design to get it imported into the United States and get it over that threshold, about 1.8-ish ounces heavier to get it into the United States. And that's how we wound up with the PPK-S. Now, when the manufacturing of the gun moved into the United States, they maintained that original design, even though now that it was being manufactured in the United States, it wasn't subject to those requirements for importation because domestically produced handguns aren't held to that standard, but they continue to produce it anyway in that configuration. And that's how we get the modern PPS, I'm sorry, the modern PPKS. So here we have a scale. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the scale on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the original Walther PPK on here with no magazine inserted. It's 19.1 ounces, 19 ounces. It just went back to zero. So we have a 19 ounce handgun. If I put the new Walther PPKS on there with no magazine inserted, it's 21.9 ounces. So you can see that the handgun is heavier than the original design. Now, if you look at the two side by side, they look pretty much the same size. The most noticeable difference is right here in the grip length. So the PPK is a shortened version of a handgun that was the PP. The original PP had a slightly longer barrel and a slightly longer grip. And this handgun is the compact version, hence K. And so this handgun has the longer grip and the short stubby slide. But if you take a look at the thickness, even though this looks like a thicker handgun, if I measure the slide thickness on this, I get 0.86 as a slide, and that's of an inch, of a slide thickness, if I measure the slide thickness on this original German handgun from World War II, 0.86. So it's exactly the same thickness on the slide. Where we're gonna find that the difference is in, in that beaver tail, but also in the height of the gun. That one, this is 3.7, seven, so 3.8 inches tall. And the PPKS is 4.1 inches tall. So that's where most of that weight difference is coming from. Slightly longer grip and this extended beaver tail from the original design. That's just an interesting part of the history I thought I would share with you guys as to why this handgun's bigger and heavier than the original design. The Winchester ammunition that we're shooting out here this afternoon was given to us by our friends over at LAX Ammunition. Uh, we do have a discount code down below. The ammunition, again, has that flat nose, which is almost like a hollow point, and it's a 95 grain projectile that's advertised with a muzzle velocity of 955 feet per second. So it's pretty much range ammo. All right, let's go ahead and load up the little Walther again. Now, the only thing we did to it today was put a little bit of CLP on it, and this is its first range session, so this is right out of the box, and we've had no malfunctions with the handgun so far. Knock on wood. 
All right, so here we go. We're gonna fire off 14 more rounds of the Winchester. Again, the little gun is shooting straight to point of aim. I really like the way it handles these little 380s. Now there are smaller and lighter 380s on the market. Uh, you can pick up like a little Ruger LCP, for example. It's gonna be smaller and lighter than this handgun, but you're gonna find it's gonna have a lot more recoil, very sharp, abrupt recoil impulse, which is muted by the weight of this handgun. The downside is, is this one is designed to be a pocket or discrete carry automatic. It's a little bit heavy for that roll. The LCP is gonna be much lighter, but being all steel, it's gonna give you the confidence that some folks want in the handgun being not polymer, but all steel. So it's kind of a trade-off. Could you stick this in your pocket and carry it effectively? Sure. And it's a little bit bigger than the original PPK as well. And we still have to talk about that. But the handgun really does feel good in the hand. My only concern is just, it's probably just a little bit big and heavy for pocket carry. But I'm fairly certain with my pants and you know, I don't wear skinny jeans and stuff like that. I could get this in a pocket if I really wanted to. More of the Winchester 95 grain ball. Yeah, very flat shooting handgun. Uh, 380 with a ball round is gonna punch a hole right through something. And it is a very capable self-defense cartridge. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I picked up my PPKS directly from Walther as a dealer. If you take a look online for the going rates, I found the guns for sale on Cabela's. They were listed at $6.99. They were not available on the internet, and it said in-store purchases only. So the guns are out there, and it looks like the street price is gonna be right around $699. So when you get your pistol, it's gonna come in this plastic Walther branded box, which is lockable. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the box open and show you what you'll find inside. You'll find your pistol inside with the flag safety in the chamber, and then underneath the bottom foam, you'll find the federally mandated lock, a second magazine without the pinky extension, and then your registration card, owner's manual, and things like that. All right, so now let's field strip the pistol, and I'll show you how simple that process is. To field strip the handgun, first you're gonna to wanna to drop the magazine out of the gun. You can do that by depressing the magazine release button right here. It's in the perfect spot for your thumb. Press the button, drop the magazine out, and now you can check to make sure that the weapon is clear. I'm gonna do that by pulling the slide to the rear and remove the flag safety. Shake it out, check the chamber, make sure there's no round in the chamber, and there is not. Now, I'm gonna show you an original PPK and how it disassembles. The gun is clear, no magazine in it, slides locked to the rear, and there's nothing in the chamber. I'm gonna go ahead and let that slide go home. And what you would typically do is pull down, I'm sorry, pull up on the trigger guard, the way that I'm holding it, and push the trigger um, guard to one side or the other, and it should stay perched on the receiver. When you do that, that allows you then to pull the slide to the rear up and off the gun. All right, things are a little bit different for some reason, at least with my version of the new PPKS, in that when I pull the trigger guard up and try to push it to one side or the other, it won't stay up. So the trigger guard keeps wanting to drop down and that's how you disassemble the gun. So my workaround for that is simply to pull it down, insert two fingers in it, and this is why it's critical that you check to make sure the weapon's empty, then you pull the slide to the rear lift up and off the receiver, and now you can see inside the gun. Some of you have asked about the feed ramp. If it's a one-piece or two-piece feed ramp, you can see inside there that it's a one-piece feed ramp. This little lever right here is your bolt stop, so when there's an empty magazine inside the gun, watch this little bar right here. See how that pushes up? The slide then hits it and stays rearward even after you take 
the magazine out because the slide's pushing forward on it, keeping that bar in the up position. When you pull the slide to the rear and let it go, that's how the slide goes home. All right, you can also pull the spring off the barrel if you would like to, but then it's fully disassembled. Go ahead and put the recoil spring back on the barrel. And as you can see, the barrel is one piece with the receiver. The slide, you don't need to do anything else to it. You can just wipe it out and clean it. You can see your firing pin channel inside there. To put it back together, again, you would want this trigger guard pushed to one side or the other and stay in the extended position. But since I can't, I'm gonna put two fingers in there, put the slide on the receiver, pull rearward, set it down, and now the gun is back together. I can drop the hammer safely by putting the lever in the safe position, which you'll notice that when the hammer's cocked and you put the safety on, the trigger stays rearward. When I push the safety forward, the trigger pops forward, but now if I put it back in a safe position, that trigger is still in the forward position. The only time the trigger stays back is when you have the gun cocked, put the safety on, the hammer drops safely on a live round, but the trigger stays rearward, okay? So that is how you field strip the new PPK S Walther 380 pistol. As I've said, the Walther PP and PPK are probably one of the most copied handguns in history. And here's an example of that. This is a SIG P230, and this one's a German-made handgun. This is an older gun, but it's been in my collection for some time. But this, even though it doesn't really look like it, is a darn near perfect copy of the Walther PP or PPK. So why do I say that? Now, there's a number of things that set this handgun apart but externally it looks quite different. In fact, it has a hammer drop safety here, which is more SIG-ish than having one up here on the slide like the Walther. But if you take this handgun apart, instead of pulling the trigger guard down, you flip a little lever down right here. Then when you pull the slide to the rear up and off the gun, if you take a look at the trigger bar and even the bolt hold open bar, which is right here, it's a darn near perfect copy of the PP, PPK pistols. It's just a little easier to take apart. Instead of having a magazine release here where the decocker is, this one has a heel release. So I just wanted to show you that even handguns you may not think are direct copies of the original Walther design, some of them actually are. And this one's in 380 as well. Nice shooting little pistol. And just like the PPK-S, this one holds seven rounds of 380, eight if you put one in the chamber and top it off. We've shot the Walther PPK-S pretty extensively this afternoon. We put several hundred rounds through it, and we noticed two things. First of all, if you take a look at the web of my hand here, I'm gonna pull the gun away slowly, and you're gonna see something. A perfect indentation of that beaver tail with two cuts, one on either side of the beaver tail. Now we're just shooting mostly Winchester ball ammo, but we've also fired some Freedom Munitions ammunition we found in the Jeep, and the gun seems to like the ammo and everything, but it's not like a heavy recoiling handgun. So I took the gun, loaded it up with two magazines of the Winchester ball, and Jason fired the handgun, just two magazines. And we compared our grips with the gun, and sure enough, he started to get a red outline in the exact same spot that I'm having the outline plus the cuts in my hand. So it seems, even though this isn't very sharp at all, that for some reason the gun is biting our hands. And it's not hammer bite, it's the dovetail doing it. And uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. The other thing that we've noticed with the handgun is that when it starts to get dirty, sometimes it won't quite go all the way into battery. It'll, it'll stop about that far out of battery simply tapping it with the palm of the hand puts the gun into battery and it resumes shooting. Now, I don't know if that's just my gun or what, but it seems to be happening again when the gun starts to get dirty. We wiped it down once and put CLP on it and cleaned it off and the issues went away. All right, so I wanted to point those two issues out. Now, another thing that I noticed was that when I started the video, I was talking about the price being $699 at Cabela's. Well, I did some more shopping around while we were warming up in the, uh, the little shooting area there. We have a nice little propane heater. And I was surfing on, on my phone and I found Tombstone Tactical was listing the new handguns at $597 for a blued one. So it does seem that these handguns can be found for less than 600 bucks, 
Plus, they're also available in a blued finish, not just stainless steel, which I failed to mention before. So, if you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. First of all, we have a new Mac Buyers Club that's available only to our Patreons, and it's available to our squad leaders and above. Basically, what we're doing is allowing our Patreons to have direct access to Copper Customs distributors so you can buy stuff at distributor pricing. Again, that's a perk for our squad leaders and above over at Patreon. If you'd like to consider supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel, there's a link down below. We are not industry supported. We take no money from the industry. We're viewer supported via Patreon. Also, if you'd like to support us, another great way, a great way to do that is to pick up one of our t-shirts, hoodies, or sweaters from our Forge from Freedom store. Again, there's a link down below. Also, be sure to check out coppercustom.com. And if you're a Patreon, you can send me a PM and let me know what your username is, and you can join us on a Twitch stream while we're playing some of our favorite games online. There's a link to our Twitch channel down below. All right, guys, we're going to sign off by firing the last seven rounds of the afternoon before we go and warm up, and this looks like some Freedom ammunition. So we have seven rounds of Freedom Ball loaded into the magazine. We'll see if we have any issues here as we sign off, and if not, again, thanks a lot for those 11 years of support, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Yep, working just fine. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of James Bond like I am, you're going to love the looks of the Walther PPK. Now, if you follow the movies and the storyline, he used a Beretta 25 ACP pistol, which then he was forced into giving up and carrying a Walther and 32 ACP. So the lines of this handgun appeal to many of us, especially those my age, because we're big James Bond fans and the Walther PPK is forever, you know, immortalized as James Bond's gun. But back in the day, people shot handguns differently than we do now. Today, we use a two-handed hold and fire like this most commonly. But back in the day and in the beginning and opening scenes of every James Bond film I can remember where you're looking down what looks like a barrel of a gun and James Bond walks out, turns and fires, then blood comes down. Well, you'll, re you'll remember he's shooting from a position more like this in that opening scene. So let's see how well I can hit my rubber dummy standing fairly close using that style of shooting. So I'm going to walk out, turn and fire. Huh, not too bad. Hit him center of mass. Didn't even see the gun, just point fired. So I guess James Bond could have killed an adversary using his Walther in that manner. <laughs> yeah, completely pointless, but a lot of fun anyway.